It's cool. I, it's so much fun to have this uh, this life of the Yo-Yo Pro. I mean, there are days when it's hard, of course, but for the most part, it's been nothing but fun for 20 years. Hey, everyone. This is Popcast. My name is Dr. Popular. Uh, Popcast is a crowdfunded uh, Yo-Yo vlog where we talk about uh your know, concepts and interesting things. And this week I've got somebody very interesting, uh, an old friend of mine, uh, Dazzling Dave Schulte. Dave, howdy. Hey, everybody. How's it going? Thanks for having me, Doc. Yeah, no problem. Uh, Dave, Dave has been most famous lately, uh, I think, for uh, the 10th or uh, 11th time of being on the front page of Reddit. Uh, Dave has the most famous finger in all of yo yo there it is right there. <laughs> uh, I've been a full-time professional yo-yo performer since 1998. I was a middle school teacher, left teaching when Team High Performance uh, and Alan Nagao started the performing back in 98. I left teaching and started traveling with them for a couple of years. And when that job ended, I decided I wasn't quite done doing yo-yo tricks. So I opened my own business on January 1st of 2000. And this has been my full time since then traveling anywhere and everywhere, teaching and demonstrating how to yo-yo. So you're coming up on your, uh, well, you've passed your 20 years yeah. uh, of being a pro. And and you were yo-yoing before that, right? Like you just weren't full-time. The interesting thing is I didn't pick it up early on in life at all. I actually started as an adult. I was uh, in college, stressed out during finals week. So I picked it up then. Uh, that was 1993. So I guess there were five years of it being kind of a hobby. And then it became my job and it's been that ever since. There is an image that keeps making it all over the web, and every right. single time uh, it goes viral somewhere, every yo-yoer gets a million emails saying, hey, have you seen this thing? So I, I always see it every time it comes around. Can you tell us about um, this, famous, this famous photo? It was back in 2005 is when I, the injury presented itself. Now, this never happened from one exact instance. It just all of a sudden started feeling cold. And then after a little while... Um, and again, I might be shortening this up, but anyway, it got cold, then it started turning kind of bluish. And then one day it started to get purple. So I knew something was up. Uh, so I went to a, the doctor and I had him check it out and he sent me in for an angiogram. And at the time I had no idea what an angiogram was. I didn't, for some reason, bother to Google it to see what was going to happen. He just showed me, told me to go to the office and get an angiogram. Turns out it was like an 11 hour procedure. Well, the procedure wasn't that long, but I had to stay in the hospital for 11 hours while they put a, a catheter up through my leg, up through my chest, to my arm, and then they injected ink down the arm, and then they put it into a, a, a machine to take the angiogram. So what I thought was literally gonna be like a 10 minute, take an x-ray of my hand, ended up being a full half a day long process to figure out what was wrong with it. And they ended up finding out that there was a, a vasospasm somewhere here in the hand, or right about there, which was blocking off all the blood flow. Um, and obviously that's what that, that was the day that picture was taken. It's, it's such a cool looking thing, how you see blood everywhere in the hand, except there. Um, so after that, they sent me to a hand specialist and I, I walk into the hand specialist and I swear to you, you know, normal guy, my wife, we sit down across from him and his very first words out of his mouth, he goes, well, we could cut it off here, but I think if we cut it off at the first knuckle, less people see it. And I'm like, <laughs> looking at my wife cut it off. Uh, that didn't sound right. And then he goes, Oh, well, wait, 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 you got a couple of things we might try first. So they then put me on a drug thinner, uh, or, I'm sorry, blood thinner, a drug. I can't remember the exact name. Of it. They put me on that drug to thin it out. I had to be on it for a week. I'm sorry, a month. And after the first week, the side effects were really bad, kept doing it, kept doing it. But after a month, I just quit. It was just bad headaches, dizzy, didn't feel good. But the good thing is, is during that month, somehow blood flow got through because the color came back to normal. So at this point, um, since then, it's been the exact same. That's kind of a, the, the long and short of it is it's no longer turning purple. If I took another angiogram, it would probably be much, much better. But they said we don't take an angiogram if it's better. Now, was this a, a life-threatening thing? Is that why they were talking about cutting off the finger? Maybe. You know, gangrene is what it basically it is, you know. Um, they never brought that up. They just said that, I guess the finger would die off. If blood doesn't get to it, it would die off. But we never got to that serious of a part of it. He said, we're going to 
either cut it off here, here, but before we do that, we better, you know, take, put you on these drugs first. And the drugs worked. Is this related to yo-yoing? The, the day that I went in for the, the angiogram, the guy goes, well, did you slam your hand in a door? No. <laughs> I would know that. Car door, door door. I didn't slam my hand in a door. He said, did you slam it between boxes when loading stuff into a car? I'm like, well, I hit my hands on boxes all the time, but nothing to the point where I'd remember. And he goes, well, let me see you yo-yo. And I showed him doing just basic tricks. The ones like, frankly, the most I teach is a sleeper. That's the number one trick I teach to anyone is a sleeper. And to do that, I show people they have to throw it really hard. And I set it up with a yo-yo that won't sleep to start a triple looped manta ray. It's one of my signature series yo-yos. I throw that manta ray down really hard with the wooden axle triple loop. So it just comes up and hits my hand, hits my hand. He goes, yeah, that was probably it. He thought a blunt in like right there on that knuckle, a small, solid hit over and over and over again over the years just caused it to stop. I believe it. And it's um, it's yeah. a better story than slamming a car door too, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And it could have been a car door injury, and this would still be accurate. It is the index finger of a yo-yo master. Uh, <laughs> True. It would still be accurate. We're, we're not saying that it's it's related, but yeah, I mean, but it, it sounds like probably, because I've seen you throw, you do have a hard throw, and there are a lot of, oh boy, I sound like such a nerd. There are a lot of yo-yo injuries out there for the pros. Like a lot of us do have tendonitis, uh, oh, yeah. repetitive. Elbows and wrists. And yeah, it's, right. it's, it's crazy. I have shirts that I can barely squeeze my right arm through and my left arm is, is loose. I just have this one muscle. That muscle a little bit, yeah. Yeah, uh, <laughs> and so it is, you know, it's totally believable. Uh, what what year was, was this angiogram taken? 2005. Okay. So Quijibo had been, had been maybe, maybe you were trying to learn Quijibo and it just smack, 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 smack. And well, how many times did we get hit by Quijibo, right? Yeah. Like on a, on a bumblebee. <laughs> Thanks or... Taylor. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, so let's talk, you mentioned the finger. Um, this is something we have to address. Uh, this is happening on your uh, throw hand, your right handed, right? Uh, on your pointer finger. Uh, show us where you keep your, your finger loop though. All right. So as you can see here, this is my yo-yo hand here. It's on the middle finger right behind that first knuckle. Occasionally it travels down a touch, but it's always, I'm a, I'm a, a standard traditional hold where you kept it always right on there. Yeah. I'm also going to have to see your rock the baby at some point. If you uh, see if your palm up or palm down. Uh, <sighs> yes. Now I have to tell you, I know all the issues behind this, the, the rock the baby thing. <laughs> When I'm teaching this, I always teach palm down, and I think it's because it's easier to teach it that way. Um, when I demonstrate it, I often demonstrate it palm up if I'm just kind of showing off to it, like, hey, check out Rock and the Baby. Yeah, no, you're going to have to pick a side on that one. Oh. Okay, if I had to pick a side that what I respect the most and love the most is palm up, because I've seen all the classic old traditional players doing it palm up. You know, I saw a picture one time with like, I think it was Barney Akers and some of the old time Bob Rule, some of the old time great pros, they were all palm up. So let's, let's go back to this uh, photo again. You know, I'm kind of curious uh, as it goes viral. And when I say viral, uh, you know, it's like 20,000 upvotes or you know, the front page of Reddit for maybe six to 12 hours, maybe 24 hours. Um, and that, that's all, you know, that's really good, right? It's not necessarily like going to be on Stephen Colbert or anything like that. But like, I am kind of curious yeah. what, what have, have you gotten anything out of, uh, out of this angiogram that keeps making its rounds? Nothing really. <laughs> this most recent time I have gotten contacted from a couple of science uh, journals or science websites who asked if they could do an interview of me and, and, and talk about it, um, which I'm happy to do. The more press that gets, hopefully that somehow gets to somebody who's actually going to say, Hey, let's hire that guy to come do a yo-yo show. Mm -hmm. Um, as far as monetarily ever getting anything out of it, nothing yet, but, uh, but hopefully, uh, hopefully someday it will lead to someone hiring me for a gig to come do your corporate show or, uh, you know, trade shows. I do a lot of trade show work and of course, school shows and programs at this point, it hasn't turned out because of the finger thing, but hopefully. So, so let's talk about, um, the life of a yo-yo pro. Can you, can uh, let's talk about uh, the different ways someone could be a yo-yo pro. What, what comes to mind? Well, you have to determine whether you're going to be, at least I think, whether you're going to be a teacher or if you're going to be a um, performer 
like, you know, it all, because there's all those aspects. I think for me, the way that it worked out is I had to be all of them. I can be up on stage. I can be a performer. Today, I performed for about 500 sixth graders. It was an awesome, fun show. But if that was all I did, I don't think I'd make a full-time job because I then have to spend the rest of the week at that school teaching the kids how to yo-yo. So if I didn't have the skills of being able to master helping a kid get good at it, I don't think the show would go so well. I don't think I'd sell very many yo-yos. So, so you have to have that aspect of putting on a performance that people want to actually watch, but then also teaching them how to do it. The type of yo-yo pro that, that you are uh, involves um, usually doing assemblies at schools. You do a show and then afterwards yo-yos are left at the front desk and the school gets like a cut of the yo-yos and you get a cut of the yo-yos. Is that, is that sort of the basic model? Sort of, sort of accurate. Yep. It, it's basically it's not usually the front desk. I'm usually selling them myself or having a, a physical, a physical education teacher, maybe selling them or someone who's working with the kids to teach, you know, the big program, you know, the, the Ned program is a big nationwide one that they, they do the sales, but they don't teach how to do it. And I love Arnie Dixon's company and I love, you know, the, the idea behind it. But really the thing that that lacks is teaching how to yo-yo. I can sell, you know, 30% of the kids at the school a yo-yo, but in two weeks, are any of them still doing it? Are any of them good at it? Whereas the way my program works, uh, when I go in, the, there are kids in you know one or two days that are learning brain twister. Um, they're all knowing how to put it on their finger. They're all getting the string cut to the right height. I really see the, my program being all encompassing, making yo-yo players, not making money. So, so um, let's talk about the other ways that that you could be a yo-yo pro, because I'm sure people are always asking, how do you make money at yo-yoing? Uh, yeah. th there would be, um, I guess, being lucky enough to be uh, like a yo-yo stunt double in a Hollywood movie or whatever, and those are not frequent. Who would who would ever do that? That seems like that's never happened before. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe a couple times. Yeah. But I mean, you know, so so for the folks like Steve Brown who have have been uh, a double in Zoolander, uh, right? You know, that's Great not show. that's not a career. You know, that, that that alone. So that's not the normal way. A lot of people assume that a yo-yo pro uh, makes money from contests, from yo-yo contests. Uh, but I, I don't think we have really many cash prize contests. No, not really. And we, you know, we've all had people make a little bit of money, but that's not going to do it. You know, and, and of course the people, the one that I think the kids think about the players that are up and coming, they think about being a sponsored player mm -hmm. and that's how they're going to make all their money. Um, and I think they often come to the realization that's not how it's going to happen. There are probably a couple sponsored players who ended up being a sponsored player and stayed that way the whole time and mm -hmm. actually made a little bit of money. Most of them ended up working in the back room at the manufacturer, packing boxes and sending them off, of course. Yeah. And, you know, so they ended up being an employee of a yo-yo manufacturer, which is still a yo-yo pro. Mm -hmm. You know, that, I mean, but but I think that's not that's not what they thought. They thought they were going to be on stage entertaining and having fun the entire time when when that that that's a rare performer professional. So so most of the, the sponsored yo-yo players, a vast majority of them uh get as little as a free yo-yo and some string from their company and as much as a free yo-yo a string a signature yo-yo you know that has their name on it and maybe uh uh enough to pay for a hotel uh or a flight to the world yo-yo contest yeah that's maybe the big contest they'll get flown into it or something like that right mm -hmm. uh and then there are so so, so yeah that's where th there's not much money there certainly not going to pay your rent uh, uh, but there are another group of yo-yo pros, uh, that work for yo-yo companies. Uh, I, I did this for a while. I'm sure you did this for a while. Uh, I worked for Hasbro and was out there promoting the fast 201, uh, all along the, the, the left coast, uh, just in Toys R Us's and Walmarts, you know, uh, stuff like that. It was, it was mostly a job that involved driving to Walmarts. Uh, and just doing, <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> doing shows like that. Uh, and you know, that was, uh, a living, you know, you're basically a salesman at that point. Yeah. Right. I did that with the KB toy tour and traveling to all the different KB toys during the THP days. Mm -hmm. And you'd travel to KB and you'd check their stock and make sure they had enough stock on there. Then you'd stand out at the mall center stage and put on a show and point them over to KB and say, Hey, go on over and get your yo-yo, bring it back and we'll set it up for you. And yeah, that, that, that's, you know, that's the yo-yo pro life there a little bit yeah. too.
But another type of Yo-Yo Pro would be uh, the birthday party slash car dealership opening slash bar mitzvah performer. Uh, I'm that guy too. <laughs> oh, you're that guy too. Yeah, because it'd be hard to just do one or the other. It, you know, like I said, when at the start of this whole professional talk is if, if you are just in one little category, you're going to you're going to have a hard time figuring out what your exact job is. I mean, for me, this is what I do on a regular basis. Uh, Cub Scout shows are my January, February, March, because that's when they usually have their kickoff of the, the blue and gold seed, the, the banquets. So I do a lot of them. I do a couple of those off season, but most of them then uh, during the summertime, it's library, county fair, park and rec. And that fills the summer up big time. And then in the fall and early spring, and you know, that's when I start doing a lot of the school shows where it's like my full science of spin, where I teach the science behind spinning things and teach how to yo-yo. And then there's the occasional um, school show that just wants to hire you and pay you X number of dollars to come in and just do a fun show. And then finally, one of my favorite ones is the trade show. You know, you get hired to go out to a trade show and just attract a crowd to their to their area. That that's you know. So and then I've Those done wedding great. receptions and I've done um, basically anywhere where you could throw that. You know, birthday parties, bar mitzvahs, every one of those things. I can do those, which is what's made me well rounded enough to do this for my job for over twenty years. Mm -hmm. And and I think for a lot of those, the the real work I found wasn't the actual performance, especially trade shows. I mean, you might be there for twelve hours, but like the real work is. Uh, getting the show. It's certainly underestimated how much work goes into just being able to do the gig. Because if it was just yo-yoing for money, that would be no problem. Right. <laughs> you really got to be able to interact with the other people, interact with the crowd, interact with the birthday kid, whatever it might be. You have to be able to do that. And if you can't, you're not going to be able to uh, do it as a job for long. So, so let's talk about the kind of um, final yo-yo pro or like professional aspect of being a yo-yo, uh, which is like having a yo-yo company. It used to be really hard to to kind of be able to work with a factory. Now it's it's pretty easy. And so, like I've got a couple yo-yos, uh, the Icarus, the Bolt, uh, you know, more on the way. Um, and and you have some yo-yos that you sell too through your site. Can you tell us about that? Sure. I, I start with the most basic model ever, which is the Manta Ray, which is the old Spintastics. Uh, wide gapped uh, yo-yo. Sorry, Duncan, I almost said butterfly. Good thing I didn't. Um, a wide gapped yo-yo uh, with a wooden axle. That's the most basic. Then I have a yo yo Mega Brain that's branded for me. Those are my two basic lines. Uh, then I got the uh, Frostbite, which is a uh, Tyler Severance at Recess helped help me design that one, which is wow. the first base with uh, my setup. Uh, and then I also have the Zipper, which is a magic yo-yo production, which is a uh, standard mono metal. And then I have the uh, the Fusion. That's one of my favorite yo-yos. That's a uh, the bimetal yo-yo from Magic Yo, the, the Stealth, basically, with my logo on it. Uh, that's the Fusion. I actually have a special on these right now on my website. If anybody's interested, check it out. It's a misprinted Fusion. So it's normally a $60 yo-yo, but if you buy the misprinted version, it's only $30. Half price, and all the reason it's half price is because the label got a little misprinted. Yo-Yo itself plays great. So I think I've got about 15 of those in stock of the misprinted version if anybody wants that. Dazzlingdave.com, check it out. You can buy some of the other cool Yo-Yos as well or check out the trading card series. I have over 19 different trading cards in my series now, Doc. It's pretty amazing. So we've we've spent some time talking with uh, Dazzling Dave Schulte, uh, Dazzlingdave.com. Is that correct? Yep, that's it. Uh, and we have talked about uh, yo-yo injuries, the life of a yo-yo pro, uh, and yeah, just the different ways that people can make uh, money doing yo-yoing. Uh, and since we're talking about that, I want to give a shout out to uh, my Patreon sponsors who helped make this video series possible, podcast possible. Uh, thanks to Jeff Atwood and Greg Knowles. And uh, I think I have 50 uh, other Patreon sponsors who help fund this show. If you're interested in helping keeping podcasts going and learning more about yo-yoing and cool chats with folks like Dave, uh, go to patreon.com slash docpop. Uh, each month, my sponsors get entered into a giveaway for a special yo-yo. And this month's yo-yo giveaway is, is actually sponsored by Dave. We're giving away a Fusion, a Fusion yo-yo. So, uh, yeah, uh, my Patreon sponsor can keep their eye out for that and see who, who wins this month. And, uh, yeah, Dave, I wanted to say thanks again for, for all your time, uh, chatting. 
thank you very much. I appreciate it. Have everybody check out DazzlingDave.com. Also on YouTube, check out the YouTube channel, Dazzling Dave Yo-Yo. Like and subscribe. We'd like to see you guys more. On my YouTube channel, I got a lot of cool stuff about spin tops and making spin tops as well. Something we didn't talk much about, but you should check that out. Cheers. See you, Dave. All right. See you later, Doc. Thanks. And then we'll just hang out here.